I don't know how I should feel about the subject this week. Because I'm disappointed, I'm excited, and I'm fearful all at the same time. And you sort of know what it is from looking at the title. So I can point down there, because whether it's on mobile or you're watching it on a web browser, it's down there. Unless something's going to be proved wrong and it's like somewhere over there. Whatever. Nintendo's back on the agenda. Uh, because gradually it came out over sort of the weekend of last week and early into this past week that... Uh, the mini NES is dead. Um, yeah, f um, despite so much demand for the thing, it is discontinued for, apart from the stock that does exist and is around. Funny story about this, I went to look at prices, uh, about two weeks ago for the mini NES, because I was thinking... Okay, I remember they were extortionately expensive uh, at launch, because obviously they were very rare. And uh, when I checked a couple of weeks back, it was down to about ugh, 90 95 pounds And I was like, well, that's going in the right direction. And then this news started trickling through. The US version's cancelled. And then, of course... The European version is cancelled. No more copies. And I uh, go to check a few days back. £190. I understand why they're priced that much. But part of me is also like, think about it. All these units were bought for £60 or regional equivalent. Depending where they've gone. Um, you know, some of the European ones somehow have managed to end up in Thailand, from what I can tell from, uh, uh, Top Hat Gaming's YouTube video mentioning the thing. And there it's going for about $450, and that is currency conversion-wise, like US. Um, and the ones that did manage to stay, at least in Britain, have now obviously gone back doubled in price to extortionate values. Which I understand because it's a high demand thing, so people will want it. So what I'm recommending is nobody wants to buy it, so then I can get it cheaper. That's a bit egocentric. So I, I, you know, I'm, the likelihood is I'm not going to get even one anyway. Because rumour mill shit has come out. Um, thanks to good old Eurogamer. There are sources indicating that... This Christmas, we're getting a mini SNES. So I'm guessing on that logic, it's going to be looking like a Super Nintendo. Except, obviously, small, because it's just running stuff off a, you know, basically USB or internal memory. And 30 games, which, you know, if you think about it, Probably Super Mario World. Probably Zelda Link to the Past. Probably Super Metroid. If we're going by, you know, other things. In that respect, it's, you know, then you've obviously got to think of other things. Possibly Super Castlevania. Um, trying to think of some of the other big games. Possibly Donkey Kong Country. All these... You know, ones I'm trying to think of off the top of my head. And, yeah, th that's the reason why the NES has been cancelled, because they want people to not care about that and want to care about the new one instead. Um, but the rumour has it that they're going to be producing these more than they were with the NES. I think they realised they were never going to be able to cope with the demand for the NES for the plans that they had because they thought it was going to be a niche thing. Not realising in this financial climate, not everybody has 
I don't know, £300, $350 to spend on a Switch. I'm surprised that they haven't worked that out, considering, you know, the economy is going to hell in a lot of places. You know, China's, inf China's uh, growth has gone down. Certainly over the last few years, I can't remember the growth figures that came out this week. My financial stuff is not at the top of my uh, stuff, my you know, awareness at the minute. Um, you know, I'm gearing up for E3. I've got all that to go through. Holy shit. Uh, I don't know how we're going to do that schedule, because that could be fun. Um, uh, so... I mean, with, with the promise that there's going to be more available with the indication of it, um, well, the, the indicator is that they're going to be producing it. All they're indicating is a greater level than they did with the NES. That isn't saying much when you think about the fact that there was like... 90% of people that wanted the NES and only 10% that got it. That might be like 80 won't get the mini Super Nintendo, 20% will. So it's like, God damn it. Um, I'm hoping this is confirmed soon. It would be an, it would actually be a very smart thing to do at E3. It's the most watched event by. Gamers and non-gamers. I know it doesn't have to be a live event, and I know there's obviously going to be stuff at the show for people to actually play there. But if they're going to do a Nintendo Direct, because, you know, after the last one, which, you know, the review of, uh, I did. It's either there or there in the, you know, hopefully it's in recommended videos. I don't know what it is. It's probably something like some five-year-old kid playing Minecraft. Because that's what I seem to be getting. And watching people swearing about video games. And it's like, have you seen this video of a five-year-old kid going, wow, in Minecraft? It's like, yeah, that really reflects what I'm watching, doesn't it? That's a whole another issue. I can't be bothered to get into that. Because it's just a cluster of uh, F-words. Can you see I'm trying to clean this up so it doesn't get in restricted mode, even though it probably will be because I'm talking about video games. Ah, oh, it's too confusing. I'll let other people uh, cover all that stuff because it's complicated as shiitake mushrooms. I think I got away with it. So, yeah. The possibilities of what games could come on that mini Super Nintendo is really good. Hopefully then... The interesting thing is if you had, like, something like Gimmick, which is a fantastic game, but only, like, uh, it's it, you know, it's obviously got a niche thing because of the whole speedrunning affair because some of the Japanese guys are awesome with it. But aside from that, I think it only t officially came out in, like, Scandinavia in Europe. It never had a proper UK or mainland Europe release. Never had an American release, never had a Japanese release. Yet it is one of the hidden gems that is on the Super Nintendo. Because um, obviously when you, you know, when you think about it, there's a lot of stuff that you could have. To pin it down to 30, it'll be interesting to see what would and wouldn't make the cut, in all honesty. Uh, depends as well what distribution deals they can do with. Because, as I say, with Super Castlevania, it'll have to be Konami, but Konami needs the money because Pachinko. Mm. Uh, be interesting to see what happens with Rare. Because you could certainly do quite a few of the Donkey Kong countries. Be an interesting thing. Probably Mario Kart, I'm guessing as well, thinking about it. Mario Kart could be... Uh, on there, which, you know, only a few months after the deluxe edition of Mario Kart 8 brings back one of the features from Mario Kart 1. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to it. That's, of course, if I can get one. I, I will say, this might be the first time 
I might be getting a new Nintendo console. You know, I, I've had fun with my uh, Game Boy Color, which I picked up secondhand from a charity shop, you know, uh, flea market store. You know, for a, for a for a for a measly few pounds. How I just managed to pick up second hand, I think it's Oracle of Seasons. So that and then a reproduction cart of Link's Awakening. I've pretty much got two of the best uh, portable, um, old school portable uh, Zelda games. So I'll probably be enjoying the hell out of them. But, I mean, aside from that, it's, obviously, you've got to think of the core Nintendo things, but then it's like, who could they actually get to say, here's our game as well? It's hard to, it's hard to think off the top of my head, but, um, it, you know, as, as long as it's, I, I, you know, I, even if I don't get it, as long as there's, like, more available... And they realise that this needs to be a thing. Because when you get to N64 level, which obviously would be the next console for Nintendo, it seems tougher in terms of uh, thinking of how you're going to emulate it, especially because the controller and everything. Because, I mean, it probably is possible to just do a USB connection for an N64 controller, even though it won't look the same. Then again, would the Rumble Pack work if that even is a thing? And would it still have like the Mario Party thing where it, when you uh, do the game, we have to do that with the stick? It basically does a hole straight through your palm. I don't know. As I say, I'm sad that the Mini NS is gone. I'm excited that the Super Nintendo may be coming. And I'm frightened because. Are they actually going to make it so that people can have it? Because that is one thing that none of the other consoles are doing at the moment. Which is giving a second alternative for cheaper options. I, I don't think they even produce PS3s anymore from Sony. They obviously stopped the Wii U's with Nintendo. I think they've stopped doing 360s. So, if, if there was somehow a, a thing where, even if it is just for, like, it shouldn't just be even for the holiday season. It should be for about a six-month period from holiday through to E3. Giving people the option to get this and then discontinuing it. It makes sense, you know. You discontinued the Wii U right before or in or around when the Switch was going to be coming out. You didn't do it too quick before. Hence why I'm saying, you know, let, you know, produce more of them because we, we've learnt that you know, people, you'll be able to produce them and people will want them. Nintendo of Japan doesn't watch this, but, you know, that's, that's, that's all I ask. Make it so people aren't waiting and having to get them off scalpers because they bought 54 of them off Amazon. You know, make, make sure that there's enough stock and that you can produce enough stock because, I mean, think about it. It's a bit of plastic and probably a memory card chip thing in a tiny box. There isn't a lot to go into it. I'm pretty sure for the £60 that people paid for that mini NES, there's a quite a bit of profit there in terms of obviously the cost of production per unit. Especially if they are ROMs on it that people are playing, rather than, you know, actual physical cartridges. There's a heck of a lot of a markup. Is it worth realising that you've got all that money from that markup 
and just producing enough because you know if you're going to charge 60 pound for it and it only costs you 10 pound to make you're already making six times the money with every single unit purchased so for every one that somebody buys in theory another six could be made that's what led the ps2 to be successful that's what led the wii to be so successful that's what led to what the ex that's what led to the success of the 360. don't think you can just produce a set amount and think everyone will be satisfied let the market tell you when it's had enough of a console. You know, it's everybody got told they'd had enough of the PS3 when they started work on the PS4. With respect, quite a lot of people had had enough with the Xbox One. That's why they switched to PS4. But now they're getting interested because of possibly what Scorpio has to offer, which we'll again we'll find out in about six weeks. So Nintendo, just make sure that your people are satisfied. Not just the shareholders, but the people that play your stuff. Because I've got a feeling, and you know, the Switch is proving to be successful as we've previously mentioned. If you manage to make a cheaper alternative that anybody can access... Because it's an affordable console. You might not even need to have the most successful and most you know popular console in the Switch. Your second your second tier market could prove to be what pushes you over the edge and be the most profitable company out of the lot of them. I don't know. Am I talking too much sense? 